UFO alien encounter on the dairy farm. My name is Lenny Wilde Lionstar. I grew up on a dairy farm in a small trailer sitting in the middle of a cow pasture field, surrounded by a barbed wire fence in southern Pennsylvania. The day I was born they said I was born DOA debt on arrival by my parents. I grew up as trailer park trash and went through school known as that term by classmates. It was so instilled in me that I will always be trailer park trash. I've had some success in music, but I could become rich, and the term trailer park trash will always be in me. Despite that I've lead a very strange and sometimes lonely but interesting life in music, and with the paranormal swirling around me. Very strange things occurring. Since my teenage years I've been recording unusual and strange rock music starting in 1967. Later played in the early 80s space rock band Quasar Light. Quasar Light is listed in the Psychedelic Archives, the Bible of Psychedelic Rock Music as one of the first cyberpunk fans. The release of their self-produced vinyl record LP Experience This is highly sought after by collectors around the world, and is considered a classic in the psychedelic punk field. The music has been called alien pop music to progressive rock in the sixth dimension. The band played many live performances of original psychedelic space rock and psychedelic punk music, and performed at the legendary punk club CBGB's in the Bowery of New York City. Currently I'm playing in a science fiction, fantasy, horror and space rock cyberspace band as a sci-fi action space rock guitarist and songwriter. The band is currently in the studio working on a new online release, Pushing the Paranormal Lever. The first pushed Paranormal Lever song has been recorded Run Naked Through the Grapevine, Stay in the Center of My Mind. I also put together independent paranormal and conspiracy cyberspace films and sonic phantasm music videos for online and work as a cinematographer for Quasar Light Space Rock Cinema, and are the owner of the recording studio. And in the past I played in other psychedelic space rock and cyberpunk fans, The Alien Plant Life Project and The Mysterious Fog releasing the Conspiracy Cyberspace Opera on the Cybermonster Cyberspace label, and the soon-to-be-released online video opera of the music. My major interest in the paranormal began as a child growing up as a farm boy on my grandfather's dairy farm, while living in an old trailer in the pasture field. I became extremely interested in paranormal activity because of a strange encounter. As a small boy of seven years old I had an encounter with what I believed to be extraterrestrials. An alien encounter in the woods. I was walking deep in the woods when I came to area cleared where the electric power line towers went through. I noticed a small saucer-shaped object sitting under the power lines near the tower. A small craft-like saucer. It seemed to have these extensions coming out of like steel levers and hooked to the electric power lines. A man walked up to me who looked human. I then noticed standing next to a tree near me a very large look to be about 12 feet tall human-looking person. His skin was chalk white. As white as you can imagine. He stood against the tree motionless. He had what looked to be a large bird-like beak. The most awesome-looking creature you could ever imagine standing motionless against the tree. A large albino bird-like human creature. The human-looking person came up to me and asked me to sit down on a log stump, he wanted to talk to me. I was very scared at first seeing all this and wanted to run but felt I couldn't. I felt like I was being controlled somehow to not run. The fear seemed to fade fast. He handed me a sheet of paper with numbers on it. He asked me if I could read and I said yes. He told me to read the numbers. I looked at the sheet and there was a 17-digit number written on the paper. If you're a math whiz let me know what these numbers represent. I read the numbers out loud. He told me you need to remember these numbers. He told me to read them again and to try and remember the number sequence. I read out loud around 10 times. He then told me to read again over and over silently, and to memorize all the numbers in the sequence order. I sat and read over and over. Then he took the paper from me and asked me to recite the numbers. I recited the numbers back but forgot the last number. He became angry. Almost abusive and said, are you dumb Lenny? I said no. He said are you sure you're not stupid? Why can't you remember the numbers? I grabbed the paper back. And I read over and over again, silently forcing the number sequence into memory. He was melting the psychic permafrost in my mind. He took the paper again. I recited the numbers back in the correct order sequence. I recited back about 10 times correctly. He said, sorry Lenny that I said you're stupid. I don't really think you're a stupid hick hillbilly dairy farm boy. He then laughed jokingly. And then he apologized again. He then told me to always keep these numbers with you. Keep them in your memory you're going to need them someday. When you're much older. I said what are the numbers for? He said you'll know when the time comes. The sequence is of great importance. So, never let it leave your memory. 
The giant white albino alien creature I asked him what the giant creature was standing next to the tree. Is it dangerous? The strange man told to go up to the tree and tell the creature to look down at you. I said will he hurt me? Is he a demon? An extreme fear then began to come over me. The man said no, he won't harm you. Go over and ask him if he is a demon, when he answers walk away slowly and make your way back here. I seem to have lost my willpower to not do what the strange man said. So, I walked over to this giant 12 foot tall pure albino white creature with the bird like beak standing up against a tree in the deep dark woods, who was motionless and asked him if he was a demon. He didn't answer. He stood there motionless looking straight ahead. The fear left and the strange commanding like power came over. I then yelled are you a demon? The breath of the devil duster. Still no answer. Are you a stupid demon? His head then began to move. He slowly looked down at me. The commanding power I just had left fast. Then a paralyzing fear took over. He then slowly moved his head back up standing motionless again. Then the strange man laughing told me I better move slowly move away from the creature. You might make him mad. I moved away slowly cautiously walking backwards to not startle the creature walking backwards to the strange man. Is the creature dangerous, was he going to hurt me? He laughed and said no, we're just playing with you. I looked back at the tree and noticed a large giant chalk white bird creature smiling, grinning as if he had pulled a prank. I then noticed it seemed he had wings that were beginning to spread. Like wings of a prehistoric bird. Huge giant massive wings that were beginning to spread. I turned away and didn't look at the creature again. I asked the strange man if the creature had a name. He said yes. The UFO craft. Aliens under the electric power line in the woods the strange man in the woods then said, come with me Lenny, I want you to see something. He pointed to the very small saucer-like craft sitting below the power lines with strange looking steel levers hooked to the power line wires. There was a ramp going up into the round saucer craft. Out of the ramp came these strange looking alien creatures. The classic pictures that you always see in books, on the internet and so on. Just like the movie E.T. small creatures, almost playful. They came up to me and started touching me. Just like the movie E.T. It sounds silly. But, that's how they approached me. I then began to run around playing running from them, and they would follow and run around me in circles. Like kids playing a game. Then one of them pushed me into a briar patch. I landed in a briar patch and stuck. The strange man came over and helped me out. I was not pissed off. He then said something strange, and the aliens ran back to the round saucer craft, walked up the ramp and back into the small saucer. With excitement I said yes. I walked over to the small ramp, walked up and stuck my head inside the doorway and looked inside. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. A massive huge view. There were humans sitting around these massive what looked to be computer systems near the door ran into the beginning of the structure. There were thousands upon thousands of the small aliens, the classic looking small aliens with the big eyes and skinny legs and arms walking around in the distance. Almost floating in their movements. Aliens and humans together. I looked further out into what seemed to be a large city with a beautiful red glowing horizon evening sky. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So beautiful. How could an entire world exist inside such a small structure? I then stuck my head back outside and looked to the side of the small saucer craft, which seemed to be around 50 to 75 feet in a round diameter. I looked back in again at the massive city and a whole other world inside. I must have looked back and forth 10 times trying to comprehend how this could be. How could an entire world exist in such a seemingly small enclosure when looking at it from the outside? The strange human man then came up to me and said they were leaving now. He told me to never forget the number sequence he gave me that it is extremely important to not forget. I never forgot the numbers. I carry them with me. Ancient order of the trumpet templars that was the beginning of my adventure into the paranormal, and my interest in space rock music, along with many more strange encounters to come to not only remind me to not forget the numbers, but of what was to come. Given an 18-digit number that others have such as my meeting with the secretive legendary Amish exorcism guitarist at a jam session 14 years ago. A strange guitarist who plays this very odd looking guitar he calls Cinderella. In a conversation I told him of an alien encounter I had on the farm. He told me to my surprise that he was given a sequence of numbers also as a farm boy in Lancaster. I asked what his sequence was and he told me the sequence, and it was the same match as the sequence of numbers I had. He said he thinks the numbers are of a world conspiracy that threatens to consume the minds of the human population and turn mankind into slaves, a conspiracy that he'd learned from the secret Blood Moon Clan order. That he belongs to the order of the Trumpet Templars of the Blood Moon Clan. 
an ancient minstrel music order who broke away from the original Templars in Europe centuries ago and is now centered in York County. The Templars became coin gluttons, amassing great wealth going against the taking of the vow of poverty of the original Templars. A vow to keep the mind free of coin gluttony to remain in the spiritual realm. Lenny Wiles Lionstar.